what is Adam Eve's insane true power as I teach you the science behind what she can really do. Welcome to Trick Theory, the show that continues to explore more about math, science, and how Adam Eve is easily one of the most powerful characters we've ever covered. Samantha Eve Wilkins, or who we come to know as Adam Eve, was given her powers as part of an experiment ran by the US government's Department of Superhuman Research, where one day Dr. Elias Brandyworth approached a pregnant woman named Polly, who was living homeless on the streets. Polly in exchange for making sure that she and her daughter may have a shot at living a better life, agreed to become part of an experiment to create a superhuman that had the powers to manipulate anything, reality itself, who would become an unstoppable weapon. So while Eve was in utero, Dr. Brandyworth injected the amniotic fluid that was surrounding Eve that protects the growing child from injury, temperature changes, and aids in development of organs like the lungs, intestines, and neuromuscular system with a special pink serum of his own design that's supposedly being made of rapidly decaying particles, which is basically when a higher energy particle still has at least one more lower energy state that it can decay or break itself into to reach, which is most particles in the universe. Some just take a lot longer than others to get there, and these rapidly decaying particles that seem to be colored pink induced a controlled mutational change in Eve. And we can see that this mutation worked, as every time Eve grew restless, her mother's eyes and mouth would glow bright pink. Initially excited by the project, Dr. Brandyworth eventually realized more and more about what he was really doing as time went on, as his care for Polly also grew. He knew that, yes, Eve would possibly be the most powerful hero on the planet, but she would live a harsh life as a puppet of the government, and that once he had created one weapon, his superiors likely wouldn't want to stop there, and he wasn't initially without his conscience either. Knowing how destructive an uncontrolled matter-manipulating human could be, Dr. Brandyworth put in mental safeguards, limiters to ease power that made it so she couldn't forcibly use her powers on people or animals. Basically, anything that was living, almost. Having made plans to sneak Polly out of the lab, Polly went into labor early, and Brandyworth took her out of the lab to the pure anger of his power-hungry superior, Erickson, where Polly died giving childbirth to Eve. And as Erickson rampaged through the door, Dr. Brandyworth, through one last-ditch effort to save the child, switched Eve out with the stillborn baby of another family, being Adam and Betsy Wilkins. From a young age, Eve demonstrated herself to be highly intelligent, at least when it came to just the field of science, like biology and notably chemistry. She grew up drawing pictures of different types of atoms, created atoms out of Lego blocks, didn't like playing with any other normal toys, all without ever having read a single textbook on the stuff, with her parents really having no idea what was going on, being considered a science prodigy by her teachers, and going so far as to help her sitter study for his science exam, Eve was eventually entered into a school for advanced children, but she didn't like any subjects except for science, and found that she really didn't fit in with the other students. One night after staying out too late with the first friend she ever made, Eve, after fighting with her parents, went to her room where something interesting happened. With her thoughts stewing in her head, she touched her textbook, and something awakened within her. She found she could suddenly change the molecular makeup of anything around her, being able to see, feel, taste, and alter the atoms of everything around her, accidentally turning her textbook to glass. Her adopted mother then gave Eve an appetizing cream cheese and olive sandwich that Eve then quickly turned into a cheeseburger. And it turns out that Eve always had a connection to atoms, to science, that her powers, even before their manifestation, gave her an innate understanding of atoms, of molecules, allowing her to excel in her science classes, and quickly develop her powers as she grew older. Eve soon showed her friend how she could change the flavor of her bubblegum, unfortunately scaring her off with her ability to also create pink hard light projections out of thin air. Eventually, Eve went out for a night on the town and stopped some thieves from stealing animals, turning their ski mass into a hard substance like iron. And this is where Eve was finally confronted by Dr. Brandyworth, who since Eve's birth had gone underground and had been watching Eve from afar, coming to tell her about who he was, her adoption, and that Eve shouldn't use her powers lest the government track her down. But Eve did
didn't listen, and taking on a mask, costume, and the name Adam Eve, came to battle a villain that would become a recurring nemesis for her called Kill Cannon. With Dr. Brannyworth once again showing up, now telling her everything about her past, and why she really can't risk any sort of exposure. But soon, Dr. Brannyworth's worst nightmare came true, as the government found Eve, and using the other failed attempts to recreate Eve to capture her, in her first brutal battle, Eve watched her half-siblings literally fall apart around her before finally defeating them. Half-siblings as an Eve's mother was still alive, but just barely. At the conclusion of the fight, Erickson finally captured both Eve and Dr. Brandyworth, placing Eve in a constraint made specially for her that Eve easily removed. So as a final trump card to get Eve to comply with his agenda to create an army of super-powered puppets, Erickson showed Eve her nearly brain-dead mother Polly, her mother that he had continued to use for his now twisted experiments. Out of a pure disgust and rage, Brandyworth attacked Erickson, who in the resulting struggle killed both Brandyworth and Eve's biological mother. Having witnessed the death of the two people who had cared for her more than anything, Eve temporarily broke through her limiter, allowing her to manipulate living matter, mercifully wiping the memories of both Erickson and his lead scientists, who had created her fell clones. After this, Eve would go on to join the superhero group in high school known as the Teen Team, and eventually would meet the hero Mark Grayson or Invincible. Hey, out of all the individuals we've seen on this channel, Eve's powers would definitely be what I would wish for if I had a magic lamp. When it comes to Eve's feats, Adam Eve can create practically anything she can set her mind to, being able to fairly easily turn an apple into solid gold, turn her soccer ball into a baseball bat, dog pee into burning acid, the ground below her into glue. When she moved to Africa, she easily turned a harsh savanna into a rich farmland, making her a candidate for ending world hunger and giving countries clean water, is able to quickly create an entire forest and functioning ecosystem from scratch, and Eve can rebuild destroyed cities in seconds, possibly making them better than they ever were to begin with, alongside turning dog cages into dog treats. She can really make literally anything, as she builds all of her homes from nothing, and even makes Mark a cup of coffee, making the cup, the coffee, the cream, and sugar, all from leaves sitting on the roof of her house. Other than her mental limiter, that is only lifted in extreme life and death situations, Eve's powers seem to be limited on how much energy she actually has, or basically how many calories she has to burn before she isn't able to effectively manipulate matter because she's too tired. And on days that she uses her powers quite a bit, she has to go to the bathroom a lot. As whatever atoms she doesn't end up using in her creations, she instead absorbs into her body as waste, causing her to have to go more times than I'll say. This also means that Eve doesn't need to buy clothes, has no use for money, doesn't need to shower, as she can just make it and do it all in an instant. Beyond being able to change matter, Eve can create some incredibly powerful hard-like constructs, or basically Eve is able to turn energy, matter, or possibly light itself into a form of solid light that looks like a pure pink energy. That being Eve's most commonly used power, Eve uses to quickly create shields with rotating saw blades, force fields, bubbles protecting her and her allies in space. She has conjured battle armor, energy swords, energy bolts like Zeus, helmets to trap and blind her enemies, and can basically make anything a Green Lantern could make with her creations being limitless. Eve can also easily levitate anything she makes, or anything that she decides to manipulate, with Eve's powers being stated to be transdimensional, as her powers sometimes work by creating portals between two separate dimensions that can travel around her, allowing her to change her clothes and crackle with her signature pink energy. When it comes to Eve's overall intelligence, she is easily one of the most intelligent characters in the series, being that her powers give her a vast natural understanding of all of the possible atomic structures of any material, and through subspace, she is able to reach out to any nearby atoms, immediately understand their arrangement, remember certain arrangements she finds useful, and change them as she wishes, with there being no scientific model, hypothesis, theory, or scientific law that she doesn't innately comprehend. Unfortunately, when it comes to other fields of study, like English, psychology, and knowing how to create a building that follows the proper building codes and laws, 
she's just as stuck as anyone else. But what Adam Eve may lack in other fields, she quickly makes up for in how versatile and strong her powers are. When Earth was being threatened by Thrag, the reigning and possibly strongest Viltrumite in the series, one of Eve's hard light shields was able to withstand the blows from hundreds of Thrag's Viltrumite children flying at her. And seeing how we calculated Omni-Man at being able to lift over 2.6 trillion pounds in his own episode, and how Omni-Man casually flies around at about 900 miles an hour, give or take a few thousand, if we say that these other Viltrumites who are giving it their all are matching those two numbers in this moment with their combat speed and strength, this would mean that more or less each Viltrumite is punching with over 474 trillion newtons of force, or otherwise joules, keeping in mind that it takes about 5,400 newtons to crush a human skull, and that the bomb that dropped on Hiroshima in World War II released about 15 trillion joules of energy, if Eve is being hit by exactly 100 flying Viltrumites 100 times, she would be fending off upwards of 474 quadrillion joules of energy, or the equivalent energy of around 31,600 atomic bombs. But that's really just a fun number of what could be going on here. Eve is strong enough to contain a monster that Alan the Alien, who can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Omni-Man, Omni-Man's son Oliver Grayson, and Tech Jacket were having trouble defeating, can contain a Rognar, which is one of the few alien species that can kill Viltrumites, she can easily move hundreds of tons of wreckage with her powers, she has made a drill to travel with Invincible three miles down into the Earth's crust, eventually become strong enough to defeat enemies that Invincible struggles with, with her constructs being strong enough to wrap around and hold adult Viltrumites in place, along with other powerful heroes. When it comes to Eve's speed, she doesn't seem to be nearly as fast as the Viltrumites we see in the show, even having to be teleported to some of the big fights that happen in the comics, while the Viltrumites themselves just fly there. And seeing how Omni-Man's flight speed when he initially left Earth in our end of Season 1 calculation showed him flying at something like over 266,000 times the speed of light, although now we know he stopped to sightsee a black hole. In order for Adam Eve to fly, it's stated that she lowers the density of the air around her. Notably, she seems to do this via the thrusters that she creates with her hands and feet. And seeing how most thrusters like a jet engine works via compressing air to increase its pressure, initially increasing the density of the air, as it's then heated, increasing its volume, which lowers the air's density, where it then exits out of the jet engine's back, creating thrust, it's possible that Eve's thrusters scientifically work similar to that of a really efficient jet engine, with the highest speed for a jet engine being over Mach 3, which is about 2,302 miles per hour, or 3,704 kilometers per hour, it's likely that Eve could reach the same speeds, if not much more, especially if she creates a suit or some sort of field around her when she flies, so her human skin doesn't get torn apart. But perhaps Eve's greatest power is her powers make her effectively immortal. Since we know that in life and death situations, Eve's mental limiter is lifted, such as when the Viltrumite Conquest punched a hole right through her, or whenever she nearly dies from old age, this causes her true power and ability to manipulate all non-organic and organic matter to activate, instantly healing her deadly wounds in battles, and in the case of her old age, miraculously returns her to the prime of her health at the prime of her adulthood, allowing her to live with Invincible and their daughter throughout the ages. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. Adam Eve's powers are dependent entirely on her mental acuity, and she happens to be able to turn what would otherwise be complete junk food, like cake, into nutritious food while still making sure that it tastes and feels like cake. With us going over Omni-Man and Invincible's insane true power, and their even more ridiculous feats in their own videos. Keep in mind though, it's all just a trick. See you in the next one.